praise you, Father God, that you hear our cry, you hear our call, Father God. And even though we may not seem like you're hearing it, Father, we know that you hear, Father. And you're looking down on us, Father God. Our eyes are on you, God. Oh, we're on you, Father God. I thank you and I praise you, Father God. I pray for your healing power this day, Father God. Going through this congregation, Father, and healing bodies, Father, and healing minds, Father, healing uh, whatever is wrong, Father, that you're putting it right, Father God. I thank you and I praise you for it, Father. For you are so worthy, God. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. There is none like you. There is none like you, Father God. Praise your name, God. You're worthy of praise, worthy of glory. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God, your name is to be praised. Your name that we're praising, Father. Your name that we're lifting up on high, Father. Your name that we're giving glory to, Father God. Your name that we're honoring this day, Father God. We thank you and we praise you, Father, that you hear our cry, you hear our call, Father, and that you will answer us, Father. And, Father, I ask that you answer us speedily. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Glory to God. Father, we adore you this morning. We give you all the glory and honor due unto your name. And we thank you that we have gathered in this place today to magnify you and make you larger than any situation or circumstances. And we know that you are the great I am. We know, Lord God, that you are God almighty. So we worship, we adore you, and we do all of these things in your son Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's magnify the name of the Lord. Let's give him a praise. Come on, Bridge Church of Alabama family and friends. We've come in here to magnify the name of our God. We've come to give him praise. Hallelujah. So lift your voices this morning as we magnify him.
opportunity to lift your voices. I know it's early. You may still have a little frog in there, but he'll accept it. He just wants your praise. Father, we magnify you. Oh, Lord, you are greatly to be praised. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we declare this morning that there's no one like you, Father. Who is my God? Who is my God? Who
invite you in this place this morning, Father. Oh, not only fill this place, oh God, but fill our temples this morning, oh God. Two, we are overflowing, oh God, with more of who you are, Father. So we release ourselves, Lord, and we invite you in this morning, God. Father, we pray that you will just have your way in and through us. Breathe through us this morning, oh God. We thank you now that as we continue in this worship service, Lord, we pray that you would be glorified in it, Lord. We pray that you will be lifted high, oh God, above all else. Father, you will be lifted high. So we honor you this morning. We thank you, Father. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, good morning, Bridge Church, Alabama family. Good morning. Everybody looking so good out there this morning, amen? Amen. My name is Sister Kenya Pinagar, and I'm here before you to do good, the uh, welcome as well as the announcements. So if you're here for the first time, um, if you would, just give us a wave. If you're in the building for the first time, just give us this wave at us. I promise we're not going to put you on the spot. If you're tuning in for the first time on our live stream, just go ahead and drop a heart, drop a wave out there so we can show you a little love. Amen? All right. Looks like we are all family in the building. Amen? Amen. But let's give a little shout out for those who may be tuning in for the first time on the live stream. Woo, 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 woo. All right. All right. Well, I also uh, would like to welcome, if you're tuning in for the li and, and the live stream for the first time, I would like to welcome you on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Terrence and Latrilla Nolan. We would like to welcome you to the Bridge Church of Alabama and let you know that the first time you tune in, you're, you're, you're a guest, but the second time you're family. And Pastor would always say you're already family. Amen? Amen. All right. We do have a few announcements. Uh, the first one, we would like to uh, thank Pastor D, or as I call him Pastor D, but Pastor Desmond, who came last Sunday and delivered a mighty word last Sunday. I don't know if anybody else got anything out of that, but I tell you, I got a lot out of that word last week, all right? I think God put him on assignment, and I think he understood the assignment. <laughs> so we want to just say thank you, Brother D, for yielding to the Lord. Hey, Pastor D, I'm sorry, for yielding to the Lord and, and um, uh, walking, walking in what God has given you, amen? Also, yesterday... Uh, it says it was a very busy and productive day for the Bridge Church of Alabama. There were several, several events scheduled to take place yesterday. The men's ministry, where are y'all? Well, it said the men's ministry, but I think the men's ministry is going to be this coming up weekend. So we're going to correct that. So I apologize for that. But um, the men's ministry is this coming up Saturday. I think last week it was announced that it's every third Saturday, but it's actually every fourth Saturday. So. We will see the men next week. So I still want to hear where y'all at in the building, all right? <laughs> a 
let us know y'all excited. But also, we had our health and fitness class yesterday. Uh, that was Sister Mariah, who was our uh, our um, fitness class uh, instructor. Thank you, Sister Trevor. <laughs> our fitness class instructor and I hear she's doing an awesome job so thank you sister Mariah for that um, and I hear that everybody has been enjoying that class um, amen also our first ministry uh, marriage ministry meeting where are my married folk at all right all right all right I hear that y'all had a wonderful time last night so I'm glad to hear that I'm gonna be like y'all when I grow up amen <laughs> All right, glad that was a success. So we just thank everybody who came out and attended those events and made them a success, made them a successful event. So um, just continue to uh, pray and lift those things up in prayer. Um, again, we're trying to make these things on a, do uh, become regular events in Sand and Stone so that we can uh, begin to move and help people grow. Amen. Amen. Also. Um, the connection class will be offered real soon, so you continue to listen out for the details for that class. Um, this class is based uh, basically a class that um, gives you information about the, the ministry and how we got started, and um, it also gives you the opportunity that if you have any questions about the ministry, that you'll be able to ask those questions and get them answered. All right? So just continue to listen for those details. And I would say if, you, if you're if you new to the ministry or if you, even if you're thinking about joining the ministry, um, when we have this class, and some of us old folks that have been in, been in the ministry for a while might even need to reattend this <laughs> class. But just to, um, I would suggest that you attend the class. It's very, very informational. And uh, it gives you a lot of uh, information about how we began. Amen. Um, also, our Friends and Family Day is coming up next Sunday. Woo! All right, I'm excited about that. Um, there is a fe fellowship um, scheduled to occur um, the last Sunday of each month, so we're going to make that a, a continuous thing. So remember that every last Sunday of every month is going to be our uh, Friends and Family Day. So continue to keep inviting people, invite, invite, invite. Um, and I always say, Mama Liz has told us several times, sometimes it's just a matter of if you go through a drive through pay for somebody's food, drop an invite card. Just let them know, you know, hey, we're here. This is, we just felt like blessing you today. Amen. Because you never know what people are going through and what they need. But God does. All right. Also, our children's ministry is now open. So if anyone would like their children to attend the uh uh, ministry, the children's ministry, make sure you um, sign them in. If you have not yet, make sure you get them signed in and signed up and fill out any uh, paperwork that needs to be filled out. Amen. All right. All right. And then our monthly fast and prayer is coming up and it's going to be Monday, September 5th. And as always, um, it is from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. And our uh, prayer is at 6.30 p.m. So let's make sure that we um, do. And when I talk about fasting, I always just put, the, as I call it, a disclaimer out there that I know when we hear fast, the first thing we think about is food. So that's the first thing we go to. But God is saying, give up that one thing that distracts you from me. So it may not be food. It may be TV. It may be the cell phone, maybe TikTok. It may be Facebook. It may be sometimes you need to fast from your children. Sometimes you might need to even fast from, you know, extending yourself out so much. You know, sometimes God wants you to just, you know, work on you. Amen. Amen. All right. Also, um, our fourth church anniversary is coming up soon as well in September. It's scheduled for September 25th. So mark the calendars for this event and listen out for more in information that will be forthcoming. Y'all, I can't believe it's been four years. Amen. And look what God has done in four years. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm excited for that. And any of the events that I have announced, um, again, are not just for British Church of Alabama members. It's for anyone who would like to attend. Also, just a reminder, again, the men's ministry is this coming up Saturday. <laughs> just to throw that back out there. But if you would like to attend any of the events that I have announced, 
um, just click, go to our website at bridgechurchofal.com and click on the events link and uh, click on the event that you would like to attend and it will give you more information. And also any times that I mentioned are going to be central standard times. So just, just reminder of that as well. Um, just the, the last few reminders that we have is our Bible study every Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. And that's in-house as well as on the Facebook Live. Um, we also have our corporate prayer every first and third Saturday of every month at 11 a.m. here in the building. And then we have our virtual prayer on Wednesday mornings at 11 a.m. on um, every uh, on Google Meet. So um, any of those you would like to attend, um, please make sure that you visit the website. Amen. All right. We will now have our offertory message. so excited about this lesson. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Minister Johns, and I'm here to do the um, offertory message today. And uh, this message is a little different. I've been excited about it because I've had it for about um, almost two weeks. Um, I stay out in the country. I don't know a lot of people. I stay out in the country, and I have some land. And there's a guy that comes down. He plants down there, and um, he's planted some peas down there. And we were out there harvesting, picking peas one day. And God started ministering to me about reaping and sowing. So I want you to go ahead and read those scriptures, and then I'm just going to talk because of the things that he showed me. Because it was so much. It was so rich. Okay, the first scripture, Nicole, is going to be 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. In King James Version. In King James Version. It says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according, to, according as he purposed, purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for go loveth, uh, for go loveth God. God. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm mm -hmm. reading your typing my bad <laughs> for God loveth a cheerful cheerful giver God is able God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you also always having all sufficiency in all things may God may abound to every good work the second scripture is mark 4 and 20. On that and go to the next one before that one. Go to the next. There's another one on the next page. Um, I'm sorry, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Go to Galatians 6 and 9 first. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Okay, now read the last one. Now, Mark 4 and 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. Okay. Praise God. Um, when God uh, started talking to me about, and he was talking to me about reaping and sowing, or sowing and reaping, I always put it backwards, but it's, it's sowing and reaping. You got to sow before you can reap. Uh, and um, I was looking at these peas, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to bring them here. And I said, because some of the, especially some of the young folks don't even know what this is. 
this is what your pee looks like before it's in the can or in the frozen pee section, and this is what is called a purple hole. But what I want you to know, and what God began to tell me, he said, I don't know how many peas in here. It's probably about 10 or more peas in here. But each one of these peas is a seed. Each one is a seed. And it will produce a plant that will give you at least, I mean, I'm not going to say at least, but I've counted as many as at least 15 of these on a plant. So you see how much seed, like you, you see this little handful that I have here. I mean, and they, we won't even talk about how many we need to have in the field, but if what I need you to understand is how God works. He says that you plant a seed, how he multiplies your seed that is planted. The same thing you see with corn, because sometimes, like I say, young people don't understand stuff because, I, you know, I kind of grew up when I was young in the South, and I went north, early, um, you know, when I was young, but I came back. And even if you look at a corn, ear of corn, each one of those kernels on that corn is a seed. You got to see how God multiplies us and he uses things that we know and that we see to understand us, to keep us to understand what reaping and sowing is about. So whatever you give to God, when you plant it, he's going to multiply it back to you. And I mean, it's in his nature. That's how he set up this, this world, that he multiplies what we give and he multiplies it back uh, to us. He says some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. We don't ever know what we're going to get back, but he does. And see, God is looking at a heart. So God says, I love a cheerful giver, too. And um, God, let me up. Thank you, Father. The thing that he told me to point out, too, that also when I was in this field, um, in a field as big as the field that, that I have out there, you can't keep up with all the weeds. Now, I don't know what a tear looks like, but there was something coming up in, our, in, uh, in those peas that kind of reminded me of corn, but it wasn't. But I know it was something that was trying to choke out what was there. And see, God says you got to make sure you plant your stuff in good ground. And see what I'm saying? You can't just plant it anywhere. It's got to be good ground. You got to sometimes you got to come and pull those weeds out. You know, sometimes you can do it, and sometimes you can't. But I'm just saying that you got to be careful where you plant. And and the things that I'm saying to you, I'm saying all that to say that this place is good ground. This is good ground here, so you can plant it. And um, I, like I say, just so many things that he told me, you know, kind of began to show me. And I said, oh, Father, you know, because I've been doing it for a while. I mean, it's not the first time I picked peas. But um, it was just him talking to me and showing me as I'm going down the roads and showing me these things and, and really bringing it out to me. And I, I wanted to share it with you. Uh, and because when we sow sometimes, too, the thing is that sowing is not like planting. When you plant, you kind of take it and put it in a specific seed in a specific spot. When you're sowing, you kind of throw it out there. You kind of, you know, that's what you kind of do. So it, there's a different even in planting and um, in sowing. So you know, you but God gives you the uh, choice of how you want to do, whether you want to sow, whether you want to plant. He gives, He leaves that up to you, and how much you sow, He leaves that up to you. But He says He doesn't want you to give it like you. I'm forcing you to give this. He said he doesn't want, don't do it out of necessity. Don't do it like I'm forcing you to give something. I'm up here begging, trying, you know how we, how, go, I need another dollar, I need another, we want to make five. I, I, no, you don't give that way. You need to decide, I know what I'm going to give before I get here. And you need to decide, it needs to be right there with your other bills, like you're paying your rent, your house note, your car note, your grocery bill, that needs to be right in there with them. So decide before you get here what you're going to pay. And God knows your heart. And that's the thing I caution people all the time. God knows your heart. God knows what you have to give. Because a little with the two mice, she was giving all that she had. And Jesus noticed it. And when you're doing your best, God noticed it. And he's going to give you something. Your return is going to be something like this. There are at least 15, I like to see there's 15, what, 10, maybe about 10 in that one. But I'm just saying he's going to multiply it back to you. He's going to give you more than, you, than what you've given him. You can't beat. Our old folks used to sing that song. You can't beat God's giving because the more you give to him, the more he's going to give back to you. So with that in mind, I want you to go ahead and get your offering ready, prepared to give, get your hearts prepared to give. And the thing is expect Sometimes we don't expect God to give, but expect a return on your giving because he said it. He said that he's promised his word to you. He said that he would uh, give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over.
Show me and give them to your bosom. She's not just going to fall out the sky. So that's another thing we need to remember. There's so many things about giving that sometimes we've taken and made it so mysti- mystical. It, but it's going to come, it's not going to come uh, in some weird way. It's going to come some way that God's going to see that you get it. It can be a raise. It could be anything. Gifts, it can, it, but it will come back to you. So for those that are giving, those that are watching us online, if you're giving, you can go to our webpage at bridgechurchofal.com and uh, click on that. Then click on our donate page, and it will show you how to give. If you're texting to give, it's 84321, and uh, you can go ahead and give that way. For those that are, go ahead and get your offering ready. opportunity to give into your kingdom, Father God. I thank you, Father, as we sow into your kingdom, Father. I declare that it's a good seed, Father, planted in good ground, and it shall bring forth a harvest, Father God. I pray for each of those, Father, that's giving. I lift them up before you. I pray for those, Father, even that have a desire to give, Father, and don't have it, Father God. For you said you provide seed for the sower, Father God. So I thank you that you'll do it, Father, according to your word. And I thank you for the seed that they've sown, Father, for the good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over a blessing, Father. And there should no, be no lack in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, good morning, Bridge Church of Alabama, family and friends. Good to see everyone this morning. I pray everyone is doing well and have had a great weekend. Amen. Amen. Uh, I know that uh, I've had a great weekend. It's been full, I think, here. Uh, yeah, the whole weekend has been full. Um, we had uh, the uh, fitness ministry on Monday, and then we they came back on yesterday. I uh, had every intention on being here, but I uh, had another assignment. God had a, another assignment for us. He had uh, the worship ministry here uh, attend the conference, and it was powerful. Yes. God really, really moved, and uh, yeah, it was just phenomenal. There are no words for that. And then last night, uh, the marriage ministry, we had a fellowship, and it was awesome. Yes, yes, yes. So God is really doing some great things here at the Bridge Church of Alabama. I am uh, blessed to be um, a part of this fellowship. I want to take the time to acknowledge Pastor Terrence this morning. <laughs> Yes, my sweetheart, my husband, my love, and um, it's just an honor just to, um, you know, just to be a part of this body and this great body of believers that we have here. It's such a blessing. And um, hey, I'm I'm not I'm gonna go ahead on and get started and move out of the way. <laughs> um, but uh, God has me on uh, just assignment this morning, and I, it's an honor to be able to come before the people. This morning, I count it not lightly, so um, I'm going to pray, and we're going to go into the Word. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless you this morning. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor due unto your holy name. And we've gathered in this place to mo- this morning, Father, uh, because we know that you are the one who holds all the answers. Yes. 
So as we submit our will to your will, as we submit our own understanding to yours, Lord, we thank you that we not trust in it, but we put all our trust and our faith and hope in your word. Father, I pray that as um, the word comes forth this morning, I pray that I decrease and that you increase, Lord. I pray that I will only speak what it is that you have to say to your people. And Lord, I thank you that as they leave this place, that their lives will be changed. I thank you, Lord, that as they uh, hear your word, they will leave out ready to be doers of it. Father, we bless you and thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Father, I pray that the, uh, the uh, ears of your people are anointed to hear and their hearts are prepared to receive. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, so this morning, I just, uh, I just want to just, uh, I'm going to start with just um, the goodness of God. I was... This is something that I've been wanting to share since uh, probably a week before the back to school bash. I had gone home. This is a week after the weekend after, <clears throat> excuse me, it was a weekend in, uh, had to be July. And we had, it was a Saturday and we had actually had our, this is, I think we had first started our fitness classes. And had came over and did that and had gone back home and just had planned on just having a day of just resting and relaxing. How many of y'all love those weekends, right? <laughs> love those weekends. And so I just had plans on, you know, doing the exercise, come in, get my exercise on. And I was just going to go back home and relax. Got home, sat down on the sofa. Pastor was already, already chilling in chill mode. <laughs> and my cell phone rings. And I was like, okay, who's calling me, you know, today? So I, I answered the phone, or I actually looked at it, and it was my neighbor. And so uh, I had, we've probably met. Do you remember when it was that we, they actually came over and introduced themselves? I can't remember exactly when. It's only been probably within the last six months or so. And uh, so she had, she had called me. And she asked me what I was doing, but we had talked earlier that week because she told me that her husband um, had an assignment in Columbia, South America. And so for that week, she pretty much wanted us to get together and just to kind of hang out and do some things. I said, okay. So we did that. But that Saturday, I'm like, okay, she's calling me. You know, we chilled out. I actually gone over earlier in the week, and she made us some um, – homemade guacamole and cook some quesadillas. I mean, we had a nice little time. And so she was calling, and like I said, I had planned on just relaxing. So she said, um, I was just wondering if you could come and go with me to look for some shoes. <laughs> I was like, Okay, she was like, well, I, want, I need to go and shop for some comfortable shoes for the trip to Columbia, and I just want to find a pair, you know, that I can just kind of wear with, ev with everything and just kind of relax. I mean, just kind of be comfortable. And I was like, my first thought was like, okay, all right, God. You may want to do something today. You know, that was my first thought, you know. Okay, this, this is probably something, to, an assignment you have for me. But my next thought was, oh, man, but you know I ain't want to do nothing today. I just wanted to chill. I just wanted to chill. Look, and then I had, and then it's like I heard the Holy Ghost, right? You know, the one that's in your inner ear <laughs> that said, okay, this may be something that you want to do. So I ended up telling her, yes, I'll go. So she even came and picked me up. And so we went, um, just stay with me. But so we went to one store, shoe station, I think it is. She wanted to go there first. And she, we walked in, and immediately she found a pair of shoes. Tried them all. She's like, okay, these might work. So, but she said, let me keep looking around. So she decided to keep looking around, keep looking around. By the time we left out of the store, she was decided against the shoes. She was like, I don't want these. These is not. So I'm like, okay. So now we got to go somewhere. So, okay, I'm like, all right, God, you got me here, so I'm going to go with the flow. I said, well, you know, we can always go some different places. Let's try Kohl's, and let's go to TJ Maxx. So she said, okay. She said, but, uh, you know, let's go to Kohl's. So we went to Kohl's. 
By the time we got to Kohl's, she went looking in. We went to the shoe department. But on the way to the shoe department, I saw this rack because about this time it was, again, we were preparing for the back to school bash. So they had the book bags and all the school stuff, you know, kind of in the, how they have in caps and out in the aisles. So they had this rack of um, book bags. I don't know why this microphone like is going in and out. Oh, okay. I'll take note of that. So anyway, we were, had, were heading to the shoes, and I saw this rack of book bags. So I said, oh, man, we got to get book bags for the back-to-school bags because we, we hadn't purchased them yet. I had been looking the week prior to, and everything was so expensive. But the, the ministry wanted to actually purchase 50 book bags, so I was trying to get a more reasonable price book bag. But everything that I saw was like $25 or above. So I was like, oh, I said, this. so I looked at what they had, and I was like, oh, I really don't like these. So anyway, she didn't find a pair of shoes. So then she said, well, um, let's go to TJ Maxx. And she said, and when we go over there, they may even have some book bags. So I'm like, okay. Head over to TJ Maxx and family when I say that they had a plethora of book bags. And at this point, she is like not even shopping for shoes. But she's shopping, helping me hunt for book bags because I told her while we were getting the book bags what the need was for the book bags. And it was like now the assignment that I had now became her assignment. And so as we looked through there, I mean, we ended up, long story short, finding we got like over 48 book bags that day. We got everything we needed. The, um, the associates in TJ Maxx were phenomenal. One lady came over, do you all need another buggy? Oh, yeah. She went and got us another buggy. Then there was another lady. She was like the store manager. She was kind of walking around. She said, well, do you want more? Uh, I think we have some more in the back. I can go and pull some more out. So she went to go pull some out the back. I mean, it was just like God had rolled out the red carpet. And then we get to the register. Well, no, let me back up. So the lady who actually went to get the book bags, and she said, well, ma'am, do you mind me asking you why you're getting all these book bags? And I told her about, uh, you know, the ministry giving away the book bags. And she was like, oh, wow, you know what? I'm going to give you a 10% off coupon. Okay. She gave the coupon. So then by the time we got through, uh, got all the books back to the register, and then the person that was ringing me up, she asked, well, um, are you all tax-free? I said, well, do you mean 501c3? And she was like, uh, yeah. I said, yes, we are. <laughs> so she called her manager. Let me call my manager. She called the manager and the manager will honor and give them, uh, we'll give it to them tax-free. So what started out as a major probably for like, probably $1,000 worth of book bags, ended up being down to like less than $600. And the, the, but the point that I want to make in the whole story is that there are some times that God will have, he will direct us to, it's, that's not me, it's the mic. Okay, um, I'll just get a hand here. I'll be all right. Um, so the, the point that I want to make is that sometimes God is testing us to see if we will be obedient to what he is asking us to do. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter how um, big the, the, uh, the obedience, or I'll just read it from my notes here, walking in, in obedience to Christ isn't always flashy, but it's that everyday obedience with our neighbors, in our marriage, in our on our jobs, in our schools, that it acts as a way for God to, to bring glory to God and what he wants and how he wants to demonstrate his grace 
to the world. Amen? Because when everything was said and done in that whole thing, again, she was, and I wish I, you know, had, had thought about it. I would have put it on Facebook, but we got to the parking lot. She took a picture. Oh, pose with the book bags. So, you, I mean, she had me taking a picture with the book bags, but this was supposed to be for her shoes, right? But it was like by the time here, and then we got home, and she, and then, I mean, she was just so excited. And, but the, so what I want to say is that sometimes we can get so busy and we can miss those little uh, things that God wants, uh, want us to be obedient in, and he can use those things to do something major. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. I want to look at verses 11 through 14, please. A new living translation, please. Thank you for asking. And it reads, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave us his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make his very own people totally committed to doing good deeds. So what I want to say here is that where I was in my place of wanting to relax and do absolutely nothing. <laughs> yes, comfort zone where I wanted to do absolutely nothing. And we can even say basically want to satisfy my flesh by doing absolutely nothing. God is saying, no, I have something that I need you to do. Those book bags for those kids are most important. So I want you to get up and, and get an assignment, get in purpose, be obedient. Let's look at Galatians chapter 2. Uh, I want to look at this in the um, New King James Version, please. Uh, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. This is my favorite scripture. Probably I think every time I minister I use this. Because I have to remind myself that the life that I live, it doesn't belong to me. Uh, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet I, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So with that, um, just again realizing that when he's calling us to do things, then we should be more apt to hear what he's calling and asking us to do versus what we want to do. And I just want to uh, just give a couple of examples of just that. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. I want to look at it in the NLT, please. And we're going to look at um, the widow. Uh, it's going to be, we're going to look at verses 8 through 15 in the NLT. First Kings chapter 17. First Kings, that's okay. First Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 15. New Living Translation. That's all right, Nicole. We all have those mornings. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Zidon. Zidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks. And he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, bring me a bite of bread too. 
But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal, and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. There will always be flour and oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. So here where she felt like Again, she had her own plan. So, and here the man of God came and asked her to do something different. And so she had to put her faith in what the man of God was asking her to do, right? And, and trust that she would have what she and her son needed, even though she was thinking that, they were just going to eat and die. But she was obedient to what the man of God asked her to do, and she ended up being blessed for that. Uh, I want to go one other place, and then I want to just point out some things here. Uh, let's go to, this is another um, story in Second Kings. And I'm going to skip around in this one, uh, Nicole. Chapter 5. And I want to start at verse 1. We're going to read 1 through 4. The king of Aram had great admiration for Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him the Lord had given Aram great victories. But though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. At this time, uh, Aramean raiders had invaded the land of Israel, and among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. One day the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman took the king told the king what the young girl from Israel had said. So let's stop there. So first of all, when we look at this, to me, and, and when I was studying this, I'm looking at the fact that, and I want to point out that there is nothing that happens in our life. There is no one that comes across our path that is by coincidence or chance. And when I saw this scripture and I read that, it was the young girl who was, had been uh, taken and who was a maid to Naaman's wife. Someone who would seem very insignificant. That God would bless the man of God through someone that really just seemed like, I mean, she was a young girl and a maid. And the fact that, I mean, it wasn't like it was somebody like right next to Naaman. It was his wife's maid. Um, so the point that I want, I just want everyone to really allow that to sink in, that sometimes God will even send people in our lives who we may deem insignificant, who, who we may not put value on, right, that God may be using as an assignment. Has that happened to anybody before? And so we have to be careful of how we um, may look at someone and perhaps stereotype them. Or we may look at someone. I was going to finish. <laughs> and 
words. And, and so, but just realize that even us sometimes, we may be that, what we think is that insignificant person, right, that God is wanting to try to work through. So as we continue reading here, let me see where I want to pick up at. Um, Okay, so um, I'll paraphrase some of this. So Naaman went and told the king. I, put, I told the king what the young lady from Israel had said. And the, ki the king says to him, let's go to verse, let's go ahead and go to verse 5, Nicole. Go and visit the prophet, the king of Aram, told him, I will send a letter of introduction for you to take to the king of Israel. So Naaman started out carrying as gifts 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. The letter to the king of Israel said, with this letter, I present my servant Naaman. I want you to heal him of his leprosy. And keep going. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, Am I God that I can give life and take it away? Why is it this man asking me to heal someone with leprosy? I can see that he's just trying to pick a fight with me. <laughs> he didn't, but he, he was thinking, because again, lep leprosy, of course, was a skin disease, but he was like, I don't have power to heal him of that. <laughs> But he had someone in his camp that was. Amen. So let's go down to. Um, okay, well, I guess we can just keep reading. Let's just keep reading. And we'll read down to 14, Nicole. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes in dismay. He sent this message to him. Why are you so upset? Send Naaman to me. And he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elijah's house. But Elijah sent a messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. Okay, so let's. So who who came with the message? <laughs> mm -mm. The messenger came. Elijah sent a message. It's messenger. Let's go back to ten. But Elijah sent a messenger out to him with this message: Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored, and you will be healed of your leprosy. Keep going, Nicole. But Naaman became angry and, and stalked away. I, I thought he would certainly come out to meet me. He said, I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and heal me. Keep going. Aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the um, Farapar? Farop, 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 for par, for a par, thank you. <laughs> I had it at home. <laughs> Better than the rivers of Israel. Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. Okay, so let's, let's go back to that. So, okay, now. Do y'all see everything that's going on in this? First of all, who does he think he is? Now, you, to me, you, you should be, be going somewhere in a broken state. You have leprosy. You should really be going eating humble pie. But you coming and you saying, okay, he going to send out a messenger? Like, I mean, what's that? Yes, he did have an expectation. He had his own expectation. But he's like, wait a minute. Uh -uh. I was expecting him to come out and do this, all this grandiose type thing. Okay, so, but it didn't happen that way. So he has gotten mad. 
his flesh. He is having right now a fit in his flesh. And he is about to miss out on his blessing, right? Because he's listening to his flesh. So, okay, let's keep going. But his officers tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply go and wash and be cured. I mean, thank God he has some people with some sense around, right? And that's like us sometimes. When, we speak, when we're talking nonsense, <laughs> we need to go find somebody with some wisdom. But sometimes we go hang around with folks that they don't, they don't have any more sense than we got. You know what, girl? You right. I can't believe them filthy waters down there in Israel. I mean, you can be up here at Abana and for a par. <laughs> Because that's where he thought the blessing was. See, we, we have to really get outside of our own minds when it comes to God. And really, and I think sometimes we get so caught up in what we expect and what, how we think God's going to work it out. That we lose sight of the whole vision because we stuck on how he's going to do it. Okay, and so let's continue, please. So Naaman got some sense, went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child as he was healed. Obedience. Obedience. Obedience to what God is telling us to do. It, it brings about um, blessings. And then it says there, how many times have we questioned the leading that God has given us? How, how many times have we questioned it? Or how many of, our, of us are like naming we are, and we're in a situation and we're like, uh-uh, God. Mm -mm. I am not doing that. I am not going to take a, 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 a pay cut. No, I'm not going to do that. Even though you're praying for peace. You praying for, you know, this and that. And he's saying, okay, this is the way we're going to do it. Okay, so take a job with less money. Now, that don't sound like God. That sounds like foolishness. <laughs> but the foolishness is what com it, 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 it really it confounds us. But God, he operates in that. It's, it's, it's only a test. It's only, a t and what do you value most? It says here, God may be asking us to step out in faith and make a bold move. Sometimes it is really, it, it can be a bold move as well. So now the, the instances that I have given have been, you know, they seem very insignificant. Um, not that, that it's like uh, requiring a great leap of faith or, or a great leap of, of being obedient to what he is calling you to do. But um, so I have some questions here. Are we hearing? Let me see here. Okay. So I must read all this. God may be asking us to step out in faith. And make a bold move. Sometimes it's really a bold move. And we wonder if what we are hearing or if the direction we are getting is really from God or is it, is it us? Are we hearing from ourselves or is, or is it our will? Are we just uh, imparting what we want to do, what, what we feel our own revelation is about a situation? Is it the enemy trying to distract us? Is he trying to steer us away from God's path by making us think a leading we have is from God? Or is it truly a test of our faith? Sometimes we, we have to just lean on our understanding of who God is and lean on our understanding of his character and on his and lean on our understanding of his direction of what we what we know what he's already shown us how he's already moved and done things 
that didn't make sense to us, but it makes sense to him. So let's look at some people who did, took some bold steps of faith. Um, let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 12. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4 in the New King James Version. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And you and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abram, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So this is, this is just an example of, and we could go deeper in the story, but I just wanted to give the example of, Abram stepping out and being obedient to what God had had told him to do and what God said that he was going to do in his life from him being obedient. Um, let's go to Gen Genesis chapter 6. I'm not going to read all of this. Um, verse 9. And this is just the story about Noah. And how God had instructed him to build an ark. It hadn't rained. I thought I was had put the whole scripture in here. It hadn't rained, but God had instructed him. Oh, here it is. I got my pages mixed up. Um, let's go to 13, Nicole, please. I just want to go to the instruction that God had given him. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out, all out along with the earth. Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Leave an 18 inch opening before the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build Three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. And look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die. Okay, and so I just want to go down to verse 22 where it says, so Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. He did everything God had commanded him. And from that, Noah ended up um, re replenishing the earth, he and his family. And, I mean, again, what? And so there's that um, Noah is the lineage of, Okay, somebody help me out. I don't know. I read it. Who is Noah? Who he is? Who's like down? Who? Who? Somebody. I thought somebody said it. Not his parents, but out of Noah's lineage came somebody. I can't. It's okay. I can't remember. I read it, but I can't remember it right now in my notes. I didn't write it down. So um, I just have some questions here, and I'm almost done. How do you know the test you are hearing is from God? Or how, how do you know 
that the assignment that's coming to you is, is coming from God? How has God communicated with you in the past? So how do you know it? Number one is it will line up with his word. Let's go to Numbers uh, 23, verse 19. God is not a man, so he doesn't lie. He is not human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Okay. Um, I want to stop at 19. Yes. And so reading that God is not a man, so he doesn't lie. He is not a human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? So sometimes what what um, obeying God looks like to us is embarrass, embarrassment. Or it may look as if we may look foolish. Or it may seem like, okay, um, no, this is not. But we have to remember who he is. It's not about us, right? So when he gives us a word, and sometimes the word will come from a man or woman of God. But, and I know for myself, there are times where a man or woman of God have spoken or said, suggested that I do something. But now all of a sudden, oh, I can hear God for myself. I ain't doing that. I mean, let let somebody say, you know, um, I'll just use this very loosely. But pastor may say, well, Ken, y'all think you should do the offer to a message? <laughs> and yet you be like, uh, no, nah, pastor, God ain't told me that. And you could say no. But instead of saying no, because you know that this is your man of God and you are serving him and you believe in his counsel or his, um, that God has put him in your life to be that wise authority counsel, then you take heed to what the man of God is saying, just like the widow did, just like um, Naaman did, you know. And because of that, then you are obedient to what it what God is speaking through the man and woman of God and in that lies the blessing and so yeah that's what I mean so all of that so that's that's kind of like number one the word and really the Holy Spirit speaking through I guess that would be number two the Holy Spirit speaking through uh your man and woman of God wise counsel and Yes, so the, it, those, those two things, based primarily, I'm just going to leave it, leave that there. Okay, and so obeying God in small matters is an essential step in receiving God's greatest blessings. Often God's greatest blessings come from as a result of our willingness to do something that appears to be insignificant. I said that earlier. Our obedience always benefits others. It always benefits others. God often rewards others, in particular, those closest to us as a result of our obedience. When I was obedient and went shoe shopping, God ended up blessing with the backpacks and so on and so forth. When the widow was obedient, she, she blessed the man of God by feeding him as well. Now Naaman, I don't I don't know that he I guess benefited himself on that, but when we obey God, we we will never be disappointed. Yes. The Lord's command is for you to fear him above all else. Those things I just talked about, being embarrassed, 
the, the same sovereign, omnipotent God who keeps your heart beating is more than able to handle the results of your obedience. If he tells you to do something and you know without a doubt it is his will, then you need to obey. Amen. When you choose, well, I just said that. And lastly, I was sub, would like to submit, and we learned this this weekend. And I thought, oh, wow, God, how you connected that. But obedience is an act of worship. It's an act of worship. And, and we learned that obedience is simply following Oh, uh, well, worship is follow this basically following instructions. But let's just go to Abraham. Uh, yes, Abraham, chapter 22. Um, yes. Oh, let's go to Genesis. I thought I said Genesis. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, but I was wrong. <laughs> uh, chapter 22, verse, we're going to look at verse, uh, verse 1. I'm not going to read all of this, though. Oh, uh, well, okay, we got a little time. Y'all bear with me. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied. Here I am. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him. Along with his sons, Isaac, then he chopped wood for a fire and a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place of the in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little far further. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood and the burnt, for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulder while he himself carried the fire and the, the was that fire? And the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son, Isaac, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At the moment the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, yes, Abraham, replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld me from me, even your son, your only son. And so what it was like what I, in, in closing this out, it's like our obedience to God because I, for Abraham to have to take his son to sacrifice to God, and he was willing to do that. I mean, just the, even the walking to the, you know, the place where he was to sacrifice the son and just the whole thought of 
Abraham realizing that God gave me this son, you know, and the life that I live, it belongs to him. And so if this is what he is calling and instructing me to do, then I have to be obedient and do that. And just the thought of the willingness to do that and how that just really pleased the heart of God and how God came through and, and how he came through. And so note here, when the Bible places, <clears throat> even though the Bible places a strong emphasis on obedience, it's critical to remember that believers are not justified by obedience. Does that make sense? That the life that he's gave us, salvation is a free gift of God, and we can do nothing to merit it, meaning that our obedience doesn't make us any more righteous. That's already done because of the blood of Christ. But our obedience, true Christian obedience, froze from a, from a heart of gratitude for the grace that we have received from the Lord. And that's what Abraham basically, I feel, was giving God that he had a heart of gratitude for even blessing him with the son. And so I will leave you all with um, Romans chapter 12. Let's go there. Verse 1 in the NLT. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living oh, and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Amen. So just um, just we all remember that our lives belong to God and just really for us to really hear the voice of God. Hear the Holy Spirit as we just continue to even in the most insignificant things. God is there. And I just believe that. Nothing that that happens in our life is by chance. Even that person that may be calling you to go shoe shopping. It all serves a purpose. <laughs> Can you come back up with me? Come on back up with me. Amen. Um, I hear the Lord saying that there, there are times that what we sense to be an inconvenience is really a setup for our success and what God is trying to establish in our lives. But we look at it as an inconvenience. Like you said, you want to chill. You know, you want to chill because I was already chilling, you know, and so you can't do what I do. You can't <laughs> drink from the cup that I drink from. <laughs> But uh, but what was an inconvenience, it turned out to be, I mean, there was a, a line of blessings that God had set up. Number one, I look at the impact that you have on the neighbor's life, that she's even drawn to you to want to spend time with you. You know, we have to look at those things. She wanted to spend time with you. You didn't have to, you didn't chase after her. She's chasing after you. Right. And then she's not trying to get your money, you know. She spent her own money, you know. She just wanted to be with you. It was your, it was your presence that she was after. It was your character that she was drawn to, you know. And again, we haven't, haven't even known them six to eight months. And then how you gave up your own free will, really to satisfy her, because right. it wasn't something that you wanted to do, right. you know. Whether or not you're gonna buy some shoes or not, you know, that was the devil talking about you buying some shoes. So you know, <laughs> you know. Glad you was obedient and didn't hear the devil, you know, that, that little voice you heard, you know, that voice was probably saying, inner yeah, inner ear, and was like, well, you know you ain't going to buy no shoes because you know your husband's going to get mad, <laughs> so you're just going to go for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, look at the, just the series Absolutely. of how God blessed yeah. 
from just you being obedient and being the woman of God that you are. And then all the multitude of families that were blessed, the end result. And see, the end result is that we still have not even seen the end result yet. Wow. Because those families that have been blessed, it's a blessing that continues to bless. The Bible says that we're blessed to be a blessing, right? And so now these families that we have blessed, there's no way that they can put that book bag on filled, filled with supplies and not think about where they came from. Amen. You know, and so and when I say think about where they came from, they know, those that honor God, even in those households, have to honor God and say, Lord, I thank you that, to, that this year, I, you know, you blessed me where I didn't have to go out. But it was just a series of blessings. And so I just want to say that there are times that we sense that or we think that, you know, what God is inconveniencing us to do just out of our obedience right. that there is a series of blessings. And the Bible says that he blesses those that, that diligently seek him. He rewards them that diligently seek him. And so, so thank you. I just want to say, you know, that was an awesome, awesome word. And you all, come on, if you don't mind, let's praise God for the woman of God that stands before us. And so I just wanted to say that. I just heard the Lord say that. And so we have to be very, very careful. And that's why it's so important that we're sensitive to, the, to hear the voice of the Lord. So sensitive just to hear what it is that the Lord is trying to tell us because, you know, it's not all. And you read it in Galatians, uh, Pastor, Pastor Latrilla, the in Galatians chapter 2, that our life is not our own. And when we get that, when we really finally allow that to be, you know, who we are, that entire essence, that our life really truly is not, it does not belong to us anymore. You know, and freely we get, we've given our life to him. And so if you've given your, you're freely. And if you've given your life to him, just so step back and let him have it. And, and just re, be rest, and re, and rest assured that he's going to bless you. That he got, if there's anyone who has your best interest at heart, <laughs> it's God himself. And who greater, who else greater will we, will we give our life to? that has our best interests at heart. Who else? Who knows, already knows what tomorrow has planned and established for us. Already knows our weaknesses and our strengths. He already knows everything that, that we desire. He already knows the type of people that we need in our lives. And you said that one thing that, you know, uh, I think when it came down to naming, you said that, you know, sometimes we, we have to find out or find those people that are, that you know, that are, that are, that's helping us because when there's nonsense going on, we need somebody with some good sense. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, we can, we, we're thinking and, and we're, it's, it's, we're hearing just, it sounds like nonsense, but just surround your people that have some good sense that's going to steer you back into the direction that you need to go. And so I just wanted to close out. I just wanted to come and share that with you and just thank God for my wife. Baby. Thank you so much for honoring us. And um, I know it has been a difficult week for you, a challenging week for you. You've been doing a whole lot. Um, my mother-in-law don't like for me to put out her business, but she's about to get married. <laughs> and so, and you know, and because she's getting married, the brunt of, of the planning and creating and, and just the vision of the, the entire ceremony, it falls on, on Latrilla. And so Latrilla has just been so busy this whole week planning a marriage, you know, preparing, and, that, and we haven't even talked about just the, the ministry side of it, you know, we ain't even got that part, man, it's just everything else that she as a daughter has been um, requested to do, and then as she mentioned, you know, we, we uh, had to take part, and it didn't have to, we were blessed to take part in this ministry opportunity over the weekend, the praise and worship ministry, and and it's just been, and then she still had to deliver the word. And I'll tell you this, uh, I think it was Friday, I mentioned to her, I said, look, sweetheart, if you got too much on your plate, let me know. You know, I'll, I'll minister on Sunday. And um, so she had that opportunity, and I got up this morning and said, hey, you know, what can I do? What can I do to help you, you know, prepare your message? What do you, what do you need from me? But she was determined to hear God. And if, even though it was a challenge week, you know, some folks would have, you know, copped out and said, hey, you sure you want to, you know, you can do this for me and I'll do it next week. She didn't cop out, you know. She, she, she said, you know, I'm going I'm to be obedient. And so even in your obedience, 
God's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. Yeah. Yeah. I know that. I'm just, I'm, I'm glad I'm just a partaker of it, too. You know, I get to share in the, even if it's just the crumbs off the table. They're going to be some good crumbs. I don't know about y'all, there's sometimes I drop some crumbs, man. I'm like, man, I wanted that crumb, boy. <laughs> man, I wanted that crumb, boy. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining us today, all of you that are here. And, and I just want to really thank um, you all who did come, come and go and participate in the ministry uh, of our, uh, number one, the um, marriage ministry on yesterday. Thank you all for finding it not robbery to sow into your marriage and to be a part of that. Thank you so much for that. Thank you all who uh, came on Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday, um, you know, to participate in that, the, the, the worship conference. It was such a blessing. And I thank God for you all for that. Thank you for doing that. Um, and, and just, I mean, I, I, my heart is really full. I, I received a prophecy this morning from a man of God, and I'm just believing God for it. And God has been speaking to me and believing. I'm just believing him. I'm, I'm just, I'm foolish enough to believe the crazy stuff that people will say is foolishness. I'm crazy enough to believe it. And I believe God is able to do it and to perform it. And so I'll share, I'm going to share the prophecy when you see the manifestation of it. I'm going to share it. I'm going to say, I'm going to yeah, but y'all just remember that I told you, though. I told you that God's going to bless, and I'm going to show, I'm going to, I'm going to, man, I'm getting, I can't wait. Love you guys so much. Anybody who has never given their life to Christ, now this is a, a, another important part of our service. If you've never given your life to Christ, this is an opportunity for you to do so. She said this earlier. She said that salvation is free. It's already paid for. You don't have to do anything. You can't do anything to earn salvation. Christ died on the cross for us. He did it freely, and he did it because he really believed that this is what he was born to do. He was born to die for the world. He was born because he, he knew that him dying was going to make him one with God. He already knew that. He left God. He left heaven, and then he had to go, go come here, spend some time here. But he wanted to go back. He had to go back to be with the Father. And he said, I only do what I hear my Father tell me to do. I just, I'm me and him are one. We're one. And I, he said, I'm leaving. I'm going to leave you guys here. And I got to go back home. And be with my father. But he left us with an opportunity to be where he is. He said, where I am, there ye may be also. So he gave us an opportunity to be where he is. Where his position was. His position was that him and the father was one. And so he said, I got to leave to prepare a place for you. But where I am, where I currently am, which, which, which is, and I heard a prophet say this yesterday, where Jesus currently was at that moment. When he said that, he said, where I am. I'm going to step out the way so that you can be where I am, which is one with God. But the only way that we can become one with God is when we give our life to him. We have to give our life to him. And you do that through a simple prayer, just simple communication. For those of you that are out there watching this virtually, if you've never given your life to the Lord before, this is an easy, easy opportunity for you to do it. And for those of you that are in here, if you want to rededicate your life or give your life, it's a simple prayer I'm asking. You just say this prayer from your heart and watch God do a work in your life that, he is, that you have never seen done before. Say this prayer with me. Father God, you know my life and you know how I've lived it. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I believe in your son. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross for me. They buried him in a tomb. But on the third day, he rose from the dead with all power in his hands. That power is what saves me. Thank you, Father, for saving me and giving me new life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, you are now saved. Your life now belongs to God. And I tell you, you can trust him. You can trust God with your life. And he's going to do some miraculous things in your life. Just allow the communication. That you just open up a door of communication. Allow that communication to continue to be so. And watch God bless your life. 
Also, for those of you that are there, that are out there virtually, if you need some, some material, if you need some prayer, put it in the chat. Put it on our website. Let us know what it is that we can do for you spiritually. We want to be that, 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 that um, bridge over troubled water to help you, you know, extend. We want to extend um, our lives, our, our resources. We want to extend all that out to you so that you and Jesus can be one with the Father as well as we are. Amen. Amen. Love you guys so much. Lovely wife, thank you so much for blessing me with such a wonderful word today. I am I'm honored to be your husband as well. So thank you so much. I am. I'm honored. What are we going to eat today? <laughs> Amen. To God be the glory, guys. Let me speak a, a word of benediction over your life. Father, bless these, your people, those that are here, God, here in the sanctuary, as those that are watching virtually. I pray now that the blessing of Abraham will continue to be up upon their life. Father God, wherever it is, God, that needs to be fixing, that needs to be fixed, God, fix it now. God, rearrange. Do whatever it is, God. Establish them, God. I speak now that the favor of the Lord be upon their lives, God, that the favor of God will go before them and make all Christians places straight, God. I thank you now, God, that wherever they go, God, that they will continue to have favor with man, God, that they have favor, God, in their ideals, God, that they have favor in the resources that they need. God, I pray now, God, that that their house, their households, God, are blessed, that their children are blessed. Father God, that their, their relationships are blessed. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you will continue, God, to do miraculous things in their lives. Let them know, Father, that you are still a miracle worker, that you are still working miracles in their lives, Father God, and that there's nothing too hard for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love you guys so much. And we're here at the Bridge Church of Alabama where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. Until the next time, hopefully you, you have an opportunity to tune in with us on Wednesday night. Where we, we will continue our Bible study. Men, don't forget, we will be having our men's breakfast on this coming Saturday. Uh, I will be putting that information out to you guys as, as we normally do through a, a, via text. I uh, will just continue to ask you if you can bring someone with you. Bring someone with you. We want to... Uh, we want to influence, you know, just this entire city. We want to, we, and we want to do it through our love. The Bible says that how will they know you are my disciples? By the way you love one another. And so we want to continue to do that. I also want to ask, as you leave out of here, guys, grab an invite card. Sometimes the easiest, the best way to get someone to come to church is just to let them know where you are. Let them know where you're serving. Just give them an invite card. Don't preach to them. Just say, hey, what you doing Sunday? If you get some time, bam, you know, come, come visit us. They may not come the first Sunday. They may not come the first month. But eventually they may remember, man, you know what? I'm in a place and I need God. When was the last time I heard somebody say something about church? Oh, the British Church of Alabama. I think I'm going to visit. And, and, hey, you never know. Someone just may show up. First time guest, I see you here. I don't know if, if you've been here before. You have? It's been a while. But thank you so much for coming. Why are you looking at me like that? No, you didn't. She'd be looking at me like that, y'all. Love you guys, man. And look, until the next time, God bless you. I'm Pastor T with my lovely wife, Latrilla, and all the Bridge Eyes here. You guys know what's up. I'm out. God bless you. <laughs>